This is a patient who had uh, a young patient two years old uh, with uh, white cataract. Um, the etiology is not known actually, um, but it discovered the leukocoria since uh, one month and they've been told that she has cataract. No history of trauma could be uh, elicited. Uh, the other eye, the lens was quite clear, there's no problem. Um, she had normal labor, no intrauterine infection, no family history of any uh, problem. So what we do is we do uh, two paracentesis uh, and then because it's white cutter, so we have capsular stain here. Uh, this is very vital because we need to do good capsulexis and capsulexis usually is not that easy uh, in young age. So uh, we put the visual um, capsular stain and then we clean it uh, with BSS. Uh, viscoelastic cohesive uh, viscoelastic is injected inside the eye cystitum was used to start the capture axis White uh, matter actually went out of the uh, capsule. So just like the hypermature cataract in the adults, so we had to aspirate some of the lens matter from the inside the capsule by a cannula. As you can see, some of the lens matter actually is coming out through the very small, the tiny uh, um, uh, needle. This scholastic or VD was injected again to flatten the capsule. Actually, we used um, a retina forceps, the, the forceps used for uh, peeling of the epiretinal membrane. These forceps can go through the 20, easy through the 20, uh, 1.1 or 20 gauge uh, paracentesis needle. It's very controllable. So we started and we can even switch hands. Unlike the adults, the elasticity of the uh, capsule in the children uh, makes it challenging actually to complete round controlled capsulexis. But this capsule, this uh, forceps makes it much easier. By manual irrigation aspiration was used to aspirate the lens matter. No FACO is needed in children, as we all know. It takes few minutes to aspirate all the lens matter. In children, we have to be very meticulous in removing all the dense matter and doing some of the capsular polish to prevent any uh, opacification of the, of the capsule. It will happen, but at least to prevent as much as can be. And in infectious cases, to prevent any intraocular inflammation.
So we're polishing the posterior and anterior capsule using a low vacuum and switching hand to move the remnant capsular uh, cortical matter from the other side. This is temporal approach. meticulous cleaning of the capsule and cortical matter is done. Just polishing the anterior capsule as well by the low vacuum of the irrigation aspiration probes. Now, because the uh, opacification of the posterior capsule in children, as we know, is 100%, we have to do some uh, posterior capsulotomy as well. So here we are doing just being sure that we are cleaning the anterior capsule uh, uh, fully and meticulously. This will make difference, especially um, for the capsular contraction and capsular sense contraction. So we're removing some of the remnants of the OVD from inside the capsule because we we have we'll have to inject. Um, uh, capsular stain again for the posterior capsular exit this time, not the anterior capsular exit. So here now we are injecting uh, capsular stain and cleaning it out by BSS as well. This is BSS and the Sinski will let the uh, stain go from the other port. We're trying to make the ports as beveled as possible to make it self-sealing. But usually in children with these elastic tissues, usually sometimes we have to put some sutures uh, to prevent uh, the leak and prevent the postoperative infection. So we put OVD again in the anterior chamber and with the same cystone needle. Uh, now here we are. Um, making the capsulexis bigger by using the forceps, the, the scissor, the uh, retina scissors and retina forceps as well, just to make it the capsulexis slightly bigger than uh, what happened before. Now this is tome is introduced to start capsulexis. We are trying to shift the uh, uh, filters of the microscope to see which filter will be better. So the posterior capsulexis will be more visible. But we get back to the 
without filter to the light without filter. OVD was injected again just to inflate the anterior chamber. You may do it to separate, put it on inside the anterior vitreous to separate the anterior vitreous face from the uh, capsule from the posterior capsule, but this is usually not needed. Now with the same um, forceps that we used, the epitome crane peeling forceps, we used it to do, to fashion. Uh, a bigger, uh, moderate actually, moderate like uh, four millimeter uh, capsule excess, posterior capsule excess. This will help putting the lens after some time because she's two years old, the patient is two years old, so I postponed putting the lens except after maybe one more year or two more years when the eye is more mature to be able to um, predict the IOL that is needed for this kid and so the anisometropia will not be large and uh, this will prevent from um, prevent the exchange IOL that need for the IOL exchange later on. The only thing is the amblyopia. So the parent knows that we have to do glasses as early as possible and patch the left eye, the other eye until we do the uh, secondary intraocular lens implantation in this eye, which may be like one year or two years. Contact lens is another option, but the parent has to be aware how to be, how to put it on and take it off and how to clean because usually kids cannot take care of themselves. So the complete capsule access was done easy. We can shift both hands as we did in the anterior chamber. This is the uh, good part, the good thing about using the small, uh, knee, knee, small uh, forceps of the retina. To prevent the opacification of the anterior vitreous face, which can happen, or usually actually happen, we have to do limited um, anterior vitrectomy. This is the centurion vitrectomy. It can go easy through the small uh, incision of the 1.1 hole. Uh, 1.1 1 .1, uh, paracentesis. It has a high cut rate. We use the cut rate of 5,000. An IOP of 50. So as much adjuvitrectomy uh, is done, If you have smaller capsule excess, you can even get it larger with the uh, vitrectomy probe. It's more controlled. But if you're going to put the lens in the primary procedure and you want to put it in the bag, it's better just to stick to whatever uh, capsule excess that you've done because we don't want the spread uh, of the posterior capsule excess and then the lens will not be stable and it may fall down in the vitreous. But if we are not doing the primary IOL implantation, so you can just fashion the posterior capsule, capsule access with the vitrectomy probe.
can change the setting now from the anterior vitrectomy to <coughs> uh, irrigation aspiration cut sequel in this uh, centurion. So in the second step, you can use the same probes as irrigation aspiration um, by manual irrigation aspiration to um, aspirate all the viscoelastic uh, matter that we put inside the eye uh, instead of shifting to the irrigation aspiration probes. We can even polish whatever we can find with the low vacuum that we, we are using. So the same probe can be used as irrigation aspiration if you are changing the setting to IA cut sequely rather than the anterior vitrectomy uh, sequely. We try now to, to uh, make the pupil more smaller by injecting myostats inside the eye. This will show if there, if there is any uh, vitreous tag attached or getting out of the vitreous to the anterior chamber and we can uh, clean it out with the vitrectomy. The other alternative is to put uh, tramcellulone inside the eye but we are afraid in children because we cannot measure the IOP you know, on the second day so we are I, I prefer not to put uh, tramcellulone so if the IOP will be higher, um, I can I, I cannot actually measure it. So I will just judge it by the round shape of the pupil. If it's knuckled or tagged or there's tag coming out, so it means that there is vitreous. Otherwise, if it's round and constricting universally, so there is no vitreous inside the anterior chamber. So final vitrectomy was done from the anterior chamber. and try to hydrate the uh, side ports that we've done to see if there if there is any leak and if there's any need for one suture in each port sometimes it's uh, sealed sometimes we have to have a suture if you are in a doubt in doubt of any leak it's not harmful to put suture and take it off after uh, one week or two weeks. Uh, the induced astigmatism will not be that much. And after removing suture, uh, the astigmatism will go. So if you are in doubt of any leak, it's better to, uh, to put suture. So we inflate the eye fully and test the leak from the, uh, from the woods. Thank you very much.